Hi everyone, welcome back to another Crush It TV tech tutorial. My name is James. I work for a company called Seek First Productions, and uh, we often get clients that want green screen footage. In this case, this client wanted um, basically an executive talking to the camera addressing their company. Um, so we set up the screen screen, and what's important to do off the bat is separate your subject from the screen as far as lighting is concerned. This guy is actually standing about eight or nine feet in front of the green screen, and we have two lights on the sides shining down at the green screen um, in order to light it properly. And then we have diffusion thrown on there, and then we have one light actually shining on him in front in order to light him properly. We could have done a little better job as far as underneath his eyes are concerned here. Um, you can actually fix this in post-production, which we might have a tech tutorial on later. But ultimately, I could have moved the light down a little bit more to cast a little bit more light underneath his eyelids here, and that would have been nicer. But uh, this isn't about production, this is about post-production. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do um, green screening of uh, Chroma King green screen footage such as this. So the first thing that you are probably tempted to do is to just throw a key light on there, which uh, I would actually recommend you not. That's actually going to be the third thing we're going to adjust. The first thing that I suggest you do is actually to create a mask around him. You want to find out where he's going to go the farthest off screen left and right, and then just start creating your mask. So you can go back and adjust this layer later. But right there, we, we already axed a whole lot of our green screen that is probably not lit as well as where your subject is. So that's really important. Okay, from here, what I like to do is actually throw on selective color. And what we're going to do is we're going to select all of the greens. And what we're going to do is we're going to crank our cyans up to 100, our magentas down to negative 100, our yellows up to 100, and our blacks up to 100. What this has done is it's made our uh, green screen actually pop out more, it's more vivid, which is easier for the program now to select it. You can turn on and off this effect to see that you're only affecting the backdrop. You're not changing any color on your subject, which is very important. You want to maintain the right flesh tones. Okay, so now we get to the part that you were probably eager to do at the beginning, which is throw on key light. We're going to go ahead and do that. And what I like to do is I like to select um, a part of the green screen that's really close to where your subject is. Okay, so there you go. The next thing you're going to want to do is actually then take this and just run it down into the darks a little bit. Not much, just a little. Alright, so this is looking pretty good. It looks pretty black all around. But, you know, it can be deceiving whenever you're looking at black on black. So, what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a new layer, a shape layer. I'm sorry, a solid. And it doesn't really matter what color it is, but you want it to be bright. You can put that under your subject. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. All right, just to show you a little bit about what this would be like if you had not done this, is you'd have a little bit of this cropping up in your shot. So that's why we bring this down, just to sort of get the shadows a little more. All right, from here, what I want to do is I want to actually go to my view. I want to hit screen mat. And so what this does is it, it shows everything that you're trying to chroma key out in black and everything that is actually part of your subject is in white and you can see how you have a little bit of issues in here around his tie, around his shoulder. So you want to twirl down screen mat and you want to start clipping your blacks. Just to get rid of them a little more, we're going to try around six. Alright, that looks pretty good. Looks pretty black. Pretty solid. But then your whites have some issues. So we're going to maybe take this down to more like 88. You don't really want to go too far down. Try 86. That looks pretty good. All right. So let's go back to their final view. And here, this is starting to look pretty darn good. Look around his edges. Uh, one little tip I have for shooting on green screen is actually shoot in 4K. The resolution will help uh, your program be able to resolve where the pixels are separating him and the backdrop better. This was actually shot in 1080p, but I do recommend you shoot in, in 4K if you can. All right, so here we have an issue on his thumbs. You can see where light is reflecting off the green screen, and it's actually bouncing back onto his skin, which is having making the program have a difficult time deciphering between what is green and what is not because some of that green is actually being cast on the edges. After Effects has this great little uh, dispel bias 
where you can select basically flesh tone and uh, and get rid of some of that reflection some of that green reflection which definitely helps especially when you pull out this far alright there you have it the last thing you want to do is do a little bit of a, a RAM preview so that you can um, see if there's any chatter or any issues whenever you're playing the video now we'll watch it it looks pretty good and so for this shot in particular you may want to just throw a little bit of curves on it now that you've done all this other stuff just brighten him up a little bit it sort of depends on what you're going to use for your backdrop now make sure whenever you uh, go to export you take off your your backdrop and uh, it's important that after you add it to your render queue you click the output mode and make sure the channel has RGB plus alpha checked on it what this does is it sends an alpha channel which registers transparency and so basically it's saying all of this black space is transparent and so when you import it back into Premiere or Final Cut um, you're then gonna have basically just him and then nothing but transparency instead of a black space so you can you know put them on top of any sort of backdrop that you desire if you'd like to see any other tech tutorials on After Effects make sure you comment in the section below subscribe to Crush It TV for future tutorials that we come out with and I will see you in the next video